Hello, hello. I am going to, how do I do this? Share. No, that's guest. Oh, invite group members to watch. Okay, I'm just gonna send some invites here because I am going to go live and talk about Beauty Guide Basics. And I'm not gonna go do that for a bunch of people. Whoops, how do I get rid of that? There we go. Hi, hi. Okay, listen, please don't assume because this is called Beauty Guide Basics that we're talking about things that are super basic and that are only for new beauty guides. This is one training that is beneficial for everybody. So please share this video into your chats, into your groups, um, not your groups, I'm sorry, your teams, if you're a leader, um, but definitely into your team chat so we can get like some conversation going. And I just noticed something's happened with the Facebook and the comments. Maybe I did an update because I'm seeing like these giant green bubbles when people pop on. Maybe I haven't been live in a while. Anyway, hi guys. Welcome to today's Team Beauty Surge training. Please clarify I'm in that group. I'm pretty sure I am because everyone that I see jumping on are teamies. Okay, cool. Hey, Lisa. So my name is Morgan Crook. I am an executive lead director on our team. I always love saying executive like it's so fancy. Hi, Jen. And we're talking about Beauty Guide Basics. And if you watched the broadcast that I did in um, the opportunity event that we did, was that last month? I think it was, yeah, at the end of last month. Um, basically, I'm gonna cover a lot of the same things, but some new stuff too, okay? So I don't want you guys to miss out. Um, so I'm gonna go over this kind of quickly because you've heard this stuff before. But what I do want you to do is get a pad of paper, get your notebook, get your planner, get whatever it is that you use. Hi Mia, hi Lauren, to take your notes. Because what I want you to do is be able to go back to this and think, how can I implement this stuff into making my business more successful, all right? Okay, so first off, we're gonna, well, we're gonna talk about two things. And something that I, that is gonna be different about this training than the one that I did in the opportunity group is the opportunity group, I wanted to talk about like what it is that we do as beauty guides. Like how do you make this a business, right? However, now that everyone in this group is a beauty guide, I wanna talk about not only how do you make this a business, but I wanna talk about sponsoring and recruiting and how you, you make this into a like lucrative business because you know you can sell a lot of product and you know you sell ten thousand dollars a month and you're gonna make thirty five thirty five oh my gosh what is the math <laughs> oh my god um, Morgan Crook does not do math whatever thirty five percent of ten thousand dollars is I can't believe I can't figure that out right now. You make a lot of commission on that, but let's just think about for a second, it is not sustainable for you, for your customers, for your business to sell $35,000 a month unless you have a network of 50,000 people. You know what I'm saying? So your sales goals need to be reasonable and it is not reasonable to expect that you're going to sell 10K a month. Nobody does it. We have a few people in our company that get up there like really high with those numbers. They have huge networks and it's not the norm. So don't even put that as your, your goal. Um, we're not talking about sales goals here, but if I was going to be your leader, your sales goal should be $500 to $1,500 a month unless you're going for a promotion or a leadership role, then it should be over $2,000. So my personal opinion. Okay, so first thing, sales. We are into the business of sharing and not selling. And we are not spammy. We are not going to tell you to go inbox every person you know and say, hey, I, I'm gonna swipe these comments to the side. Hey, I think um, you have got to try this product. Your face looks dry. You know, we're not gonna be those people. It's just not gonna happen. However, we are into the business of problem solving, right? So if you see somebody comment, or you're doing a video or something and they comment and say, my face feels really dry or what's your favorite, um, you know, remedy for dry skin, you have a array of solutions, right? 
Okay, so wh where are you gonna start? The first place you're gonna start is on the Team Beauty Surge website, which is pinned at the top of this page. It's also pinned on the top of my team page. Um, probably most of the leaders have that, that, that website pinned with the password because it is the holy grail of where you need to go for your basic foundation of what you're gonna do for your business. You need to know what the six step training is on there. You need to know what the daily success formula is. If you don't, it might be time to get back onto the website and do a little review. Honestly, it's been a long time since I've been on the website. I'll admit it. However, um, I need to go back there and refresh myself with what are the six steps again, right? I mean, I'm constantly bringing on new people. I need to make sure that I'm training them to do um, what I know what I'm telling them to do. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so make sure you're following those two things. The daily success formula should help lead you along the way. Okay, so I did a poll in this group quite some time ago asking what are the top ways that, that you as beauty guides get your sales? And Facebook timeline was number one. So my biggest piece of advice in getting sales is do not hide in a closet. Do not act like you're embarrassed to do this. Do not um, be shy. We are promoting an amazing line of skincare and makeup, and you need to tell the world about it. And the easiest way to tell the world is through your Facebook profile. Now, I personally think that everyone should have a public profile when it comes to all limelight posts. If you want to keep your friends um, for your family and your kids and that kind of thing and have a special list for those, that's totally cool and fine. But why would you hide if you're going to be talking about quench cleanse and how much you love quench cleanse and make it searchable, make it shareable. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so the second thing was Facebook Live. This is something we just went through. Aaron Call did an amazing um, idea in January of the 30 days of live. And I think it got a lot of people out of their comfort zone. It certainly did with my team. And you know, you learn how to talk about different things. You know, doing 30 days of makeup tutorials is not reasonable. It's not normal. People don't wanna watch it. However, you mix in other things and you start talking about, you know, your yummy drink that you're drinking that day, or I don't know, what else, what else am I doing here? How I'm selling my clothes on online and like whatever, or magnetic lashes, which I can't even find. You guys, I bought the magnetic lashes. I did a demo of the magnetic lashes. I think I, one of them came off. So I took them both off and I put them in a pocket. I don't know where they are. This is the kind of stuff that people want to see on Facebook Live. They want to see you being you. They want to see you talking about things you love. They want to see you um, being, you know, educational. Educational and entertainment. Um, that is my goal when I am training and when I'm talking about what you should talk about on Facebook Live is be educational. Make it fun, but also deliver some sort of a message that somebody has a takeaway from, right? Okay. Um, so Facebook timeline, Facebook live videos, Ashley loves the fast forward video. Um, I actually just posted one yesterday. The quality is generally not amazing, but it gets the point across and it makes somebody um, able to see what you're doing in a very short period of time because a lot of people don't want to watch a 15, 20, 60 minute live broadcast, right? Um, and then groups. And this is what I talked about the closet. I do not personally believe you should have a closed group for your limelight business until you have, I mean, honestly, like a network of like 200 or 300 people that want to be in that group. We don't add people blindly to groups. We're not those people. We are going to ask somebody if they want to be in our group. We're going to tell them what we're going to provide as far as information in that group. And they either say yes or they no, or they say no. So the group is not my favorite place. I really think anything that you can post in your group, besides like a sale or a giveaway, make sure you know the rules on those. If you don't and you're in my team, we can start a chat in our team about it because it's something we don't talk about a lot, but we do have rules and guidelines as beauty guides as to what we can um, advertise and offer. But almost anything that you can say in a group, you can also say or do on your Facebook timeline. I'm just saying, it's a better place on your timeline. You're gonna get more impact. You're gonna get um, those fringy people that you didn't even know might be interested in your product 
or your business that want to be part of it, want to know what more about it, want to buy something from you that you would have never thought, oh, I should add them to my group or ask them if they want to be in my group. Right? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Other ways we can, we can sell products. Online parties. Ashley just did a video about a three-day party yesterday. I haven't even had a chance to watch it, but it's something that I want to implement because I have a couple of uh, customers that want to do an online party. And I'm like, how am I going to do an online party that I feel authentic and genuine with? And I want to learn and figure that out. Um, the Zoom boom. See, this is why I told you guys, you need a pen and paper. You want to write this stuff down. The Zoom boom, Ash, or not Ashley, um, Maria Siza did a video in the Fempire group about the Zoom boom, which is basically a virtual party over Zoom where you're kind of like in the camera with people and you can see their faces and they can see you and you can, you know, talk about how to use products and they're actually using products at the same time. Pretty amazing. Um, the power hour. We offer a, this is, first of all, we are so lucky to be on a team that is so into collaboration, all right? We offer an incredible power hour script. It's like a gift served up on a platter. It is a gift that you guys can implement into your groups or do an event on Facebook and invite people to all different kinds of topics. The power hour is a must if you're looking to build your business or if you're not sure where to go. Go back to the power hour. We now have albums in this group with each of the power hours that we've created and they are freaking fantastic. I'm, I'm not kidding. They are the way to get people like engaged and interested. I'm sure you guys have seen the sales statistics, but basically it takes like 12 to 13 times for someone to be um, exposed to something before they pull the trigger and like say, yes, I want to buy it. That's a lot of exposure. So those parties are great because it's like a lot of exposure at once. It's not something you want to do all the time, especially not to your network. But I mean, once a month is not a lot. It's not a lot at all. Um, one-on-ones, I think one-on-ones are imperative. Everyone on this team should be doing one-on-ones. Ideally in your neighborhood, like get people in your house. You've got your kit and you probably have supplemented it with other stuff, but you want to get people in your chair and play with the products together. You don't have to be an expert. I promise you don't have to be an expert, um, but you can also do a virtual one-on-one. -on -one. You can do it in FaceTime, you can do it in Messenger, you can do it on Zoom. There's lots of ways where you can be like actually helping somebody and looking at them and they can look at you. And it makes people feel like you're taking the extra time, that you are putting your investment in them and they in turn will should usually it also depends on how you uh, present this as well. Um, want to buy products from you. If you're doing a one-on-one, -on -one, you need to present it as such. You are spending your time doing a one-on-one. -on -one. This is not a one-on-one -on -one training. That's another thing. Um, but you need to present it and, you know, let them know that there is not necessarily an expectation that they buy stuff, but that your time is valuable. You know their time is valuable, but your time is valuable too. And you're happy to help them. And what can I get you ordered today? I mean, you, there's a whole different um, method on how you can talk about this, and I'm sure we have a training plan for that. If not, write that down, Ashley. We need a training on how to effectively do a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, events, those would be like local events in your um, local areas, like with a tent and a table and all the good stuff. Um, and in-person parties. This would be like the classic old school, let's create a party and invite your friends over and have snacks and wine or brunch and whatever and play with makeup. And I'm gonna teach you something and you guys are gonna get samples and you're gonna try it out and you might even wash your face, um, that kind of thing, okay? So what do you wanna to do to supplement all of this? So there's two different ways we're doing that. As you, as you saw, I, I talked about five things that were virtual and this is what makes our business so flexible because those, Timeline, lives, videos, groups, online parties, all of that is on your time. It is when you make time for it and it doesn't matter what else is going on because it's all virtual. The other four things, the Zoom boom, the power hour, the one-on-one, -on -one, the events, the in-person parties, 
those all take planning, scheduling, and you need to make sure that you carve out time and energy for those things because they're not as like on the fly as the first five, right? So there's many ways you can do this business. But what you want to do is create, write this down, create an environment where people see you as an authority, okay? Create an environment where people see you as an authority and you're not gonna have to work as hard because people are going to come to you because you've put it out there that you know what time it is. You know how to, how to treat dry skin. You know how to treat large pores. You know what exfoliation is all about. You know how much concealer people need to use and where they need to put it and you know how to put on lipstick. I mean, all, all of those things, all of those things, okay? Okay, how do you do that? You be yourself. This is the most important part of creating a network on social media. You have to be yourself. You cannot create a version of yourself that's sort of like this person and that person because people will see right through it and it's not honest. So be yourself. Um, and then talk about what you love. It's not all about limelight. This is why lives are so important when you talk about many different things. You can talk about the magnetic lashes. You can talk about swell water bottles. You can talk about whatever you want because you're talking about what you love. And this is through posts, this is through video, this is through lives, it's whatever, right? Um, but talk about other things. Like, you have to talk about other things. It is boring snooze fest if all you talk about is limelight. You know what I'm saying? If I if I get friend requests all the time from people that um, are both limelight beauty guides and in other companies and like other random people and like Middle Eastern men, but we'll not talk about those today. But I go, you know, scope out their profile and I'm like, this person is boring. Like all they talk about is their product. There's nothing else on their timeline that makes me want to be their friend because it looks like a sales pitch. So make sure that you're nice and diverse with what you're talking about. Um, and then the last thing to create environment where people see you as an authority is become an influencer. Okay. It all goes hand in hand. How do you become an influencer? I would love for you guys to comment below with how you think you become an influencer. I'll tell you how you become an influencer. It's by exerting your business with passion and confidence and confidence you can fake. You know, I don't feel confident all the time. Half the time I take pictures and I'm like, oh, all right, I got to post this because someone's going to like this picture. You got to do that too. You cannot be so into yourself where you stop other people from being part of you and by putting up that wall. You can't do it. So become an influencer and people will see you as an authority and they will message you out of the blue like, I know we've never talked about makeup before, but can you do a makeover on me? Or can you teach me how to do concealer? Or your skin's looking really glowy. How do I get that look with my foundation? Okay, and then you problem solve. You problem solve. Um, okay, so the second part of this that I did not talk about in that um, opportunity group is recruiting. And I've got a little story to share with you guys. I might need a sip for that. Okay. In my old company, we called this sponsoring on our team. And I think it's because people were like, recruiting's an icky word. Um, that's not really what we do. We sponsor people into our business. And while I get that, it doesn't happen that way. I mean, for 95% of our team, People are not going to just come up to you and knock on your door and say, hi, can I give you $170 for your kit? It's not going to happen that way. People might show some interest. It's like a dance. You've got to like give them some more information and let them ask some more questions. And then it could go on for a year. Um, a lot of the times people can't even fathom that they could do this business until you put it out there and tell them, which is what recruiting is. I mean, recruiting is not a dirty word and it certainly needs to be a word that is okay with you because the only way to make good money in this business, back to the first point that I made that we can't sell $10,000 a month, is you have to have a team. 
you have to let them know that they could do this. And here's why. Here's why this would fit into your life. Here's why I think you would be good at this. You are offering something to them that is beneficial for them and not for you. All right, this is not a recruiting video, but I wanna tell a little story because I just got my hand slapped. Um, no, not like that, not like I got in trouble, but it was like a one of those moments, okay? So one of my girlfriends who I've known for a few years and been like close with, like we've traveled together, she was with my old company, but not on my team, but we were close. She, she used to live in my area. Um, we went to Canada together, amazing salesperson and awesome in all ways. She left our former company two years ago to go to another company that was more of a corporate -y position. It was still a direct sales company, but she went and accepted a, a um, corporate position. And so I wished her well, and I was like, oh, that's not the right fit for her, but she'll see someday. Um, and at this point I was still in my old company, but of course, you know, I'm not going to say that to her. I wished her well. I've always stayed friends with her and you know, I've, I've been in touch with her and you know, you want to stay in people's inboxes, right? So I message her, she moves out of state. I ask her how it's going. How are the kids doing? Like I I've talked to her over the year since I've been with limelight and <clears throat> always assuming She's content with where she is. She's posting positive stuff about where she is and she seems happy and content. But I see a post last week that said, um, it was one of those vague book posts that's like a graphic or something that's like change is good or new directions coming soon or whatever that is. And I was like, oh my God, she's leaving. What's going on? So I messaged her immediately and I was like, Please tell me, are you a free agent? Because I would love to have you on my team. And um, it was too late. I missed the boat on her and she is a diamond in the rough. And it's because I never offered her the business opportunity. And guess what she responded? This is like oh, the dagger, the dagger to the heart. Oh my gosh, Morgan, thank you so much. You just made my day. Um, no, I'm not a free agent. Um, somebody scooped me up. And so then I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I wonder where she's going. So then she replies again, oh, got to me first. Well, oh, is a limelight beauty guide. What? She's not on our team. She's on, um, I don't know, a whole other side of the company, but I know her. And so does this gal and this gal just joined her. And I'm just like, I can't even believe that this is happening. But it was a good moment of clarity. Nobody is immune to somebody joining somebody else. It happens to Ashley too, by the way. But this is completely my fault. And it's because I was never in her inbox saying, girl, I don't know how happy you are at your job, but if you ever decide that you're not happy there and you wanna come try something else, I love this company, I love these products, and you would be so at home here. I never sent that message. And I, I, I regret it, and I have learned my lesson, and this is why you need to make a list. And I know it seems icky and weird to make a list of like prospects sometimes, but it's so necessary because if you don't have a list that you can actually go back to, you won't know who you missed, who's going to post new beginnings and then you, you inbox them and it's too late. So that is my training today. Um, do not be afraid to tell someone you want, you would love them to have, you would love them to be part of your team. You know, you always make it about them and what they could succeed with here and why they would be great or why they need this in their life but don't be afraid okay i'm going to check for comments hey ash um and see if i missed anything you guys asked me questions not very many comments this happens in my lives when i do lives on my wall too i um actually no questions i literally never get any comments from people because i just constantly talk Hmm. Okay. Um, my mother-in-law asked for a one-on-one -on -one with her boss. I've ordered some of the minis for gifts. That's nice. You guys, I just got so many minis in. I like over shopped. 
13. What the heck was I thinking? But I am like Minnie's set for life. Um, sorry, I'm late. I was getting samples out. Glenna, you go, girl. Ronnie, yes. Des, thank you. Um, Christine, good. Yay. Okay, so I will give you guys homework. Why don't you go to your friends list? Actually, don't even go to your friends list. Think of your friends list. Maybe go into your contacts on your phone and look at people. You're welcome, Stephanie, who you want to reach out to and say whatever you're going to say. I'm not giving you a script. Everyone's got to say it, which whatever sounds like right to them. You know what I'm saying? But who are those people in your friends list and in your phone that you would be devastated if they joined this company and it wasn't with you? That is who I want on your list right now. And a lot of those people are the do it scared people where you're like, I don't know if I could talk to this person. I'm nervous. Like, I'm a five and they're a 10. Like those people, the people you're scared to talk to. Put those on the list too. Challenge yourself. Okay, Christine, how often do you follow up with people you message? Um, it's funny you mention that because I actually have a gal who reached out to me whenever I did my food stamp video, which I feel like was like November. So we started talking about this in November and um, then right around like in December she had, yeah, it was December she had um, like her gallbladder or something removed. Yay, Stephanie. And so I was like, oh my God, because it was right when I messaged her again after our initial November conversation and she was like, oh, I just had my gallbladder taken out and then we started talking about her baby and I was like, oh my gosh, I hope your husband and your mom can like take care of this because that's crazy and I'm sure you're totally laid up and I will talk to you later. Um, I didn't follow up with her until mid-November, mid mid-January. So I guess it was probably like three to four weeks in between. And I, I literally just followed up with her again this week because I'm on a tear because Julie just joined Limelight under somebody else and I'm not having any of that business anymore. Like if they want to join somebody else because they don't want to join me, I'm totally down with that. But I can't have them join somebody else because they didn't know that I wanted them on my team. So I am all in the inbox of those people and I just messaged her last week and I haven't heard back. So maybe she's not um, interested or not interested now, but that's another thing I wanna point out is just because someone doesn't respond or says not right now, it's not no slam the door, lock it, throw away the key. That's not what that means. So you don't really need to cross people off your list unless, I mean, I don't know that you ever need to. Like I had someone who I wanted on my team um, gosh, probably like almost a year ago, like right when I first started with Limelight and she bought products and I was following up with her and I was like, you should do this. And she joined Unique. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. Um, I thought she loved the products that I was sending her, but okay. And she's still not off my list because I don't know how that's going for her. Like I still communicate with her, you know, so often, every so often, because I want her to know that I'm still like here, I still really like her. I still think she'd be great on my team. You know what I like? Um, okay, how do I approach or ask people if they wanna host a home party? In person, text them. However feels comfortable, Jen. I mean, if it's somebody you've got their phone number of, absolutely call them or text them. Um, and I would offer them, if I want someone to do a party for me, actually my neighbor, she lives like three houses away, I am trying to figure out how I wanna ask her to do a home party. Um, can we share what we make with possible recruits? Mm, let me think about that for a sec. I will, t I will talk to her in person or I will text her and I will give her product and I will give her some samples and be like, okay, here's my idea. I would love to help your friends with some awesome makeup and skincare. I think you'll really like this. I know you're not a makeup wearer, but your skin is amazing and I think that your friends might be really into this. Plus it would be so much fun. Um, and I would just, you know, less is more, let the, let the dance happen and let her respond. And then you can respond and whatnot. Um, Christine, I don't know that you can really say I would, I would give a range. Yes. Not exact, but maybe general idea. That's totally what I would do. I mean, you can definitely 
don't do what I do and say, if you sell $10,000 a month, you can make, because you don't know how to do math, figure out the math, but you can make up to 35% commission on your personal sales, which is huge. I mean, no other company does that when you're like not even a status, like not even a status. I shouldn't say that. Beauty guide status, like not even a leadership. You might not have anyone on your team, period, and you can still make 35% on your personal sales. Like nobody does that. That is bomb. That is bomb. Okay. What other questions do you guys have? And then I'm going to go. Um, okay. I think we're good. Uh, inbox me if I don't respond to your question, if you do comment on this video. And I look forward to, um, why don't you guys screenshot your lists? Just screenshot your list or take a little picture of it and be like, boom, I did my homework and pop it in this video thread. That'd be awesome. All right, guys, happy Valentine's Day. And I will talk to y'all soon. Bye.